Hello, everybody, and welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. Or, of course, if you are watching on our growing YouTube channel, that is Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THS staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me from the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And AJ just saw Carolina pick up the 90 to 83 overtime victory over Louisville in a uh, crazy game. I don't really know the just the scenes, and we'll, we'll hit on that in a second. But just everything that went on, I think crazy game is the first thing that pops into my head. There was a couple of times in that overtime in particular that I just tweeted out. I don't even know what I'm watching anymore. This is unbelievable. So <laughs> we'll dive into that and much more. Carolina improving to 16 and six, eight and three in ACC play. Louisville dropping to 11 and 11, five and seven in the conference. And AJ, I've talked about it a little bit, but I want to start with the atmosphere in the game because it, it looked like a very hostile environment. It looked like a crazy atmosphere to say the least resulted in kind of a crazy game, particularly what we saw towards the end of the second half and feeding into overtime rowdy crowd. I mean, you know, I know you've covered a lot of games in your day, AJ, and I'll let you hit on that in just a second in terms of what you witnessed there, but stuff thrown on the court, some of the things that were kind of being said, I'm sure by Louisville fans, just a wild game, man, and in just a, a crazy environment. So that's kind of the first thing I want to hit on. What are your kind of thoughts about the game and, and the environment that you just sat in for the last, you know, three hours or so? <laughs> type and go to Google and type in crazy cinnamon, cinnamon, c- synonym, excuse me. I got hit in the head with stuff, so I guess I'm all off my rock right yeah, Concussion now. protocol, man. I did, and it wasn't alcohol because I was like, I don't want to go into the person and smell like booze, even though there was a hell of a lot of booze being consumed here tonight. It always yeah, right. is. And in a way, I think that's one of the reasons this is one of my favorite places to do games because the people are into it. But, man, there's a lot of frustration in this. This is a proud, proud program. <clears throat> it's a proud fan base. They, uh, they have banners. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have um, they have three because they count the 2013 one as I think they should. And uh, there's a lot of rich history here. This place is 22,000 seats. It's usually full when Carolina comes in here. It wasn't full tonight, but it was wasn't too far off. I, I don't know what the official attendance was. Probably about 18,000, and they were into it. And and their team showed a lot of resilience tonight. And so did the Tar Heels. And they were going back and forth and there were some ebbs and flows. And, and when the Tar Heels went up 10 and they came and Louisville went on a 12, nothing run. I, I felt like the, the building was ready to leave. And I felt like Louisville was ready to just, you know, coil up and say, okay, put us out of our misery, but they didn't do that. Mm. And the fans were right there with them and it carried and they were dying for Armando Baycott to get his fifth foul. I mean, everything, everything Armando did, they wanted a foul to be called. Yeah. And you're right about the language. I mean, I, I couldn't, if, if I tweeted or if we said what was being said, we'd lose our uh, channel. And uh, you know, it, it was pretty bad. And there were a lot of things that. being said the, the fans were zeroing in on Armando and especially Caleb. It was probably smart to zero in on a guard who hasn't had a, a ton of, successful moments in environments like this, Caleb, that is, I I think tonight in the end, it was successful because he won. They made some plays, but they were riding them hard. They were saying stuff that I usually only hear at NC state. And when Maryland was in the ACC, I used to hear at Maryland. I mean, it was, if you were to imagine NC state fans, the most ticked off and frustrated um, imaginable with the Tar Heels in town. And if anybody remembers what it was like when the Tar Heels used to go up to Cole Fieldhouse and then Comcast Center up in Maryland, that's what this was like. I've covered a lot of those games. Uh, I've done, I'm guessing, I tweeted out, I said, look, this is my 26th year doing this. I probably covered at least 1,800 college basketball games in my life. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure I saw something sort of mushroom into what this did over the last 10 minutes of regulation, 12 minutes of regulation, and then the overtime. Uh, I rarely watch the handshake line at the end of a game because I'm usually typing. And now in the Zoom age, we got to, you know, either where we're sitting here, we are, I actually did Zoom in the press room. We had a fairly normal setup where we actually allowed in the press room. So I went in there and I have my microphone and, and headphones and stuff. But a lot of times I'm pulling them out on press row wherever we are these days and I'm typing stuff. So I don't even look at the handshake line, but I looked at it. Tonight, because you didn't know what was going to happen, and and the, and the teams were fine. And in fact, Armando told us after the game that he he knows Withers that they're, they're they're buddies, and they had some good words afterwards. Just basketball, 
a uh, heated situation. Yeah. This is a proud program having a tough year. You know, they fired their coach last week and, you know, I would imagine Mike Pegues is a little bit stressed and um, yeah. the fans here have, have been through a ride, man. They had Patino. I was here five years ago in Patino and his, in his Colonel Sanders outfit. And then they had, um, I'm drawing a blank here, the former player, the guy that uh, Tyler dunked on in the uh, regional final in 08. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, of course, Chris Mack and now Mike Pegues. They'll have somebody new in here next year. So they're in major transition. They're not used to that. Yeah. So uh, all that frustration poured out. It was ugly. And I got to be honest, you know, Caleb was yelling at some fans and saying some stuff. But I think, again, young kid, emotion coming out. He hadn't been in many of these games. So there were lessons learned on the good and the bad uh, for mm-hmm. the Tar Heels and how they dealt with this. And I thought Armando, like, there were some sequences there, Jacob. And I guess the refs, the refs let him play. The crazy mm-hmm. thing is Armando's. I guess Armando got a bucket and a put back on a foul that was right in front of me. That was like a touch foul, essentially. Right. That was right after the sequence where he kept falling to the floor in rebound situations because the guys were just super aggressive going up the ball. I didn't think that there were really a lot of fouls. They were letting them play. I guess you could have called some fouls to maybe get this thing, keep it a little bit under control and because yeah. the refs didn't call fouls in that stretch. And that was a fairly lengthy stretch. They didn't call a lot of fouls. It just kind of got out of control. So, you know, do you, do you call fouls that are not really fouls to keep a game under control? Just like sometimes play, uh, umpire, played umpires will give the pitcher the black to get the game going. I don't know. Um, it, it, it worked out the way that it did. And, and I got to say that that by far, this is the craziest game I've been in a long time. And this just might be the most volatile game I've been in in my career. I've been hit by stuff before from fans. I've been when I covered Duke, when Sean Dockery hit a shot to beat Virginia Tech like in 2004 or something, I got stepped on on my head with a crazy storm on the floor. I've had all that stuff happen. Uh, I got st- I was just worried about liquid getting on my laptop, yeah. on my yeah, keyboard. Yeah. So that's what kind of pissed me off a little bit because I'm just I'm just like I'm an innocent bystander just trying to do my job, right? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just here to cover but the game. It, but it was pretty wild. <laughs> I got to admit, man, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, I can imagine. There, there's a lot to talk about from a basketball perspective. I could do 15 takeaways from this game from a basketball mm-hmm. perspective and physicality and dealing with emotion is part of basketball. But then there's a whole storyline. I'm sure talk radio tomorrow and both here and in North Carolina will be all about the craziness of the game. Mm-hmm. But I actually think in the end, and we'll hit on this here in a minute, I think the craziness of the game was great for this team. Yeah. And the fact they pulled it out in this environment, disregard what Louisville's record is and all that stuff. This is a proud, proud program. They got the dudes that can play. And mm-hmm. They were throwing their bodies all over the place. And Carolina was able to take the punches, absorb the blows, and threw one more blow than Louisville did. And that, that's what got them in the winner's circle. Yeah, definitely, definitely a crazy environment on TV. And like I said, I'm sure from where you were at in the, in the arena, it had to be a wild one. So that was to put it this way. I'm I'm sitting right now. I, my seat was on the baseline over near Carolina's bench. Right. Right now I'm sitting where the TV table was mm-hmm. and, the, and I guess some of the radio crews and I can smell beer. <laughs> So clearly a beer landed here at some point oh, God. during that whole melee situation. And it was right there with the TV crew, the, I don't know, it's ACC network. I, I saw Corey Alexander pregame. I guess he did the game tonight. I think maybe mm-hmm. Dave Barnett did it as well. This is, they were sitting a little bit over there, but I think Carolina's radio crew was right around here. I could I mean, the overwhelming, you know, that smell of beer about two hours yeah, later. It's hard to miss. Yeah, it's yeah. a pungent smell. You can't miss it. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. it's 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 like vapors going through my, my <laughs> nose and coming out my pores right now. Some second Unbelievable. Hand, it's secondhand drunkness over there. AJ, you got to watch out, man. <laughs> yeah, it reminded me back of my early 20s the next day. <laughs> oh, God, you got to love it. Yeah, it was, like I said, I'm wild. I probably shouldn't TV. go there, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll save, save, that for, save that for the book your dad likes to say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Excuse but, uh, me. Give me the cough yeah, into the you- mic. It's all good, all good. I, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I can imagine there's a wild atmosphere to witness on TV. And like I said, it ha- had to be a wild one to experience in person as well. So let's hit on a little bit more basketball related stuff than, you know, besides, you know, the atmosphere and kind of how the game went down. I'm going to hit on a few stats real quick and then we'll dive into it. Brady Minnick led the way for the Tar Heels, 24 points, six rebounds. Uh, Armando Baycott, another double double, 17th double double of the season. For Baycott, 19 points, 22 boards. R.J. Davis, 18 points, four boards, five assists. Caleb Love, 16 points, five rebounds, six assists. 
Leaky Black had 13 on four for four shooting, five rebounds and four assists for him as well. A couple interesting tidbits as well. This one's from Brian Ives on Twitter. Um, North Carolina did not score a bench point. It's the first time the Tar Heels did not score a bench point in a win since November 18th, 18th, excuse me, 1998 against Georgia. And this was the most threes uh, by Louisville. You actually sent this one to me. Most threes by Louisville all season. They hit 15 and the most Carolina has allowed this year as well. So some pretty wild stats in there. And like I said, no bench points for the Tar Heels. You you know, Puff Johnson with 10 minutes, Kerwin Walton put in 10 minutes. Justin McCoy had one minute in, in between the three, only one shot attempted by McCoy. And that obviously did not go in. So I want to talk about the second let me, let me throw another yeah. let me throw another one that you can throw in the question. Yeah, go ahead, how about go ahead. how about North Carolina with its history of running up and down the court, scored 90 points tonight and didn't have a fast break point? Wow, that's a good one, too. Yeah, I mean this, this is one of those games that you carve out and you stick over here and say, Man, there's a whole lot of lot there, and there's a whole lot of nothing there because it doesn't make yeah. any sense in some ways. Yeah, 44 bench points for the Cardinals, and like I said, zero for the Tar Heels. So wild that Carolina was able to kind of pull this one out and you kind of dive into some of those stats. But credit to Carolina starters for doing what they did, all five starters and double figures. So a big performance from them as well. But I want to talk about a stretch during the second half is the second thing I want to hit on here. Carolina up by about 10 in the second half. Louisville responds on a 12-0 run. Then this game's you know fully on again. You know Louisville's back in it, takes the lead. But credit to Carolina for responding. I think that's what I really want to hit on in this is because Carolina did respond. We've seen so many times this year, and thing something we've been critical about, something fans have been critical about, even something the coaching staff has been critical about at times. Carolina gets punched in the mouth, it seems like, especially on the road in certain situations, and it doesn't tend to respond very well, doesn't tend to bounce back like you'd expect a Carolina team to, especially with the talent that they have on this roster and some of the experience they have on this roster. But they did that tonight. I know the game yeah. ends up going to overtime, had a chance late to win the game as well. Um, you know, Caleb Love with a little bit of a questionable ball handling gets stolen. Louisville ties it up. R.J. Davis has a, you know, R.J. Davis is about you know, less than a second from putting that ball in the basket, I think. And that, you know, I don't remember who had the block. It was a great block by him to get over and kind of force the game to overtime. So we witnessed some good plays like that. But overall, you look at that run from Louisville, you, you, you think Carolina should have wrapped it up. And, and quite frankly, they should have when you look at how yeah. the game went down towards the end. But credit for Carolina responding and, you know, carrying that over to overtime and finding a way to win. I wrote a tweet that I didn't tweet when Carolina went up 10 and the Tar Heels, I think, got the ball back and they could have gone up more. And the tweet that I wrote it that I actually never tweeted, the tweet that actually wasn't, if you will, was that Louisville's body language was just like, the two teams had shifted. Carolina had a skip. They didn't look tired at all. It didn't look like the minutes were accumulating. And Louisville had that body language I've seen before. Wet, wet, I saw it from the Tar Heels and Coral Gables. And I saw it from the Tar Heels and Winston-Salem. And, and, I, and Carolina doesn't score. Louisville goes down the court. And I think Ellis hit a three. It was just sort of like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and fire this thing up from 22 feet. And it went in. Mm-hmm. And Carolina didn't get a conversion. Armando got a, a shot blocked or something. Louisville went down the court and scored a layup. All of a sudden, uh, they're back in it. It's a five-point game. I think it was 55, 50 or something like that at that time. So mm-hmm. then it shifted. So Louisville, Carolina was very close to having Louisville on the ropes. Uh, but Louisville responded by making some plays. You get credit when the shot goes in. And it was a 12 nothing run. And then Louisville was kind of maintaining a two- to four-point lead for a while. And then the heels hit him with a 7 nothing spurt late that Caleb was very much a part of. I think that one of them was that dish to Brady for the reverse dunk. Mm-hmm. Caleb had a couple of beautiful dishes. For all People like to focus on the bad things with Caleb. More than they do with RJ. I don't understand why, but they do. I mean, my social media was blowing up like crazy people, blasting Caleb. Yes, so, right. guys, he did a lot of really – I mean, you saw the best and worst of Caleb today. Mm-hmm. It was sort of a microcosm for this team in a lot of ways, but more so for him. He showed you how unbelievable he could be at times, and then you show, he showed how head-scratching he could be at times, including that late play in which he had the ball stolen from him. But they did respond. And you're right. You know, Hubert even said, you know – my team didn't handle that stuff well earlier, but they did this time. When we go back to last week when people were highly critical of the way they played against Virginia Tech and Boston College, but what did you and I talk about afterward? You know, they, 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 they were able to grit those games out. 
they were able to win when a lot of stuff didn't go right for them. Didn't it wasn't pretty. They didn't shoot well. They weren't poetry and emotion. We talked about that last week. Yeah. And they were able to win those games. And you can I asked Hubert after the BC game uh, that can you gain a lot of confidence, maybe even more when you win, when you just don't play well, when the guys don't, the wheels aren't turning the right way and everything's kind of wobbly, but you still find a way to win. And he said, yes. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that helped them tonight. I also think that the understanding we tell us talked about this, where you got all these examples of how not to do it and what it's like when you don't handle stuff like that. Well, and, and you, you have some examples of what it looks like when you guys play well. So tonight they were able to deal with the not playing well and deal with the ugly stretches and kind of use their grit that they showed last week to kind of get them back in the right groove. And they were able to do it. And credit Caleb, who I'm telling you, I don't know if they showed it on TV or not, but after that turnover in that bucket, uh, they went to the bench and uh, I think it was the end of regulation and Leakey just went up to him and just kind of had that look on his face where, you know, um, you need me right now. You need some, you need some love from one of your teammates. You need a little, you know, a little mini swat on the butt. I talk about fanny smackers. I think it was an emotional uh, swat on the butt and he gave it to him and, and who hit the first three to start the overtime. And that gave them the juice that they wrote it to the victory. So lots of growing up. It's never going to be perfect. People that complain about this and complain about that. They didn't have a fast break point. They got outscored 44 to nothing in bench points. They blew a 10 point lead in the second half. They allowed more threes tonight than they have all season. And they had five guys that played 39 or more minutes, I think it was. Louisville played 10 guys at least 10 minutes. And the Tar Heels still won the game. Yeah. So that fiber that was missing before, it's here. Mm. It was, it's still out there in the court. They're sweeping it all up right now. Mm-hmm. It was here tonight because they showed some signs of it last week. And that's why last week was important in getting them to this week. And they've taken care of business. They've won four games, four straight since Wake Forest. And you'd have to be a fool to think that they haven't gotten better since then. So this was huge. This is the kind of thing that could – people talk about MJ and the words he said. I think that that's sort of fleeting. This is the kind of thing that could have a lasting effect. And, and, and the only way it's possible, these guys were able to grit it out. So uh, highly impressive victory under incredibly difficult circumstances, a Louisville team that, you know, probably won't give the kind of effort the rest of the year it did tonight, because I think that the perspective of their season, if there's anything left to play for, probably went out the door tonight. And I'm not being disrespectful to Louisville, but no. they're in a rough situation right now. So Carolina got their best effort, their best brawn tonight. And the Tar Heels were able to match it. Yeah. Like I said, big credit to Carolina for that. I know it wasn't a, vintage performance like we've it seems like we talked about a, a, a lot about that over the last week we've seen carolina just grind some wins out you know even going back to last week against boston college kind of pops into the head even going back to virginia tech mm-hmm. a little bit you've seen carolina show that ability to grind some wins out and they do it on the road which i think was a big step to the for this team because enormous you know, Car- yeah carolina has struggled on the road this season make no mistakes about it so we already talked about it a little bit but let's talk about what this means you obviously got duke Coming up on Saturday, huge, huge game for the Tar Heels for a number of reasons besides it just being Duke and Carolina. Um, but you talked about it. It's it's a win, and it's a good win for the Tar Heels when you look at all the adversity that they faced in a tough road environment in Louisville tonight. So, AJ, looking ahead to that game, you've got some time off in between there. I knew Carolina's going to need that when you look at the amount of time that their fi- all five starters played for the Tar Heels tonight. But in your opinion, what does this win mean for Carolina? Well, I think that they've shown growth and uh, people may not think growth is sexy, but I think growth is absolutely 100% the most important thing that this team could show Mm -hmm. because they weren't very good a week ago. They hadn't beaten anybody. They still haven't beaten an NCAA tournament team. No, no. Unless Michigan gets on a run or unless Furman wins its league. Or college, of, I mean, UNCW is running away with the uh, CAA. Mm-hmm. So unless Charleston shocks and wins that tournament, they haven't they haven't gotten that win yet. And it, here we are, we're in February now, but they have 16 wins. So I said I've said a couple of times they just need to win games. Yeah, and absolutely. if you win games, you keep winning games. You're gonna get better. You're gonna 
win games in different ways, which is what they've done in the last week. And when you do that, you get more confident. When you get more confident, that means you're better at reacting. You don't want a thinking team on the floor. You want a team that reacts well on the floor because when you think, you're a step slow. When you react, you're as quick as you can be. And I think we saw a lot of that tonight. And we saw a lot of it Saturday when they were a beautiful team against NC State. They weren't a beautiful team tonight for 45 minutes, but they were in stretches. And honestly, there were some stretches where it was some really high level stuff. And there were some stretches where it was really head scratching stuff. Sometimes, you know, when, when RJ and Caleb go into those stretches where they're not playing very well and they're kind of disconnected from the team, it's a pretty, it's a pretty bad stretch. Sometimes yeah. it lasts a while, but the impressive thing is tonight they were able to pull themselves out of it. So this team grew, this team grew a lot. Uh, Hubert's message to them, uh, when they uh, came w- the next day after the Wake Forest game about uh, almost hugging instead of making them run to they throw up. I think that, that, that that's had a positive effect. I think tonight uh, going into the overtime period when Hubert said, look, go have fun. Don't worry about the crowd. Don't worry about other stuff. This is fun. This is a reward being out there. And, and, I, and I think the kids responded to that because it eased whatever tensions they could have because they could have been highly stressed the way that mm-hmm. thing ended. And, yeah. oh, and yeah. Caleb Love could have been highly stressed. But Leakey's words and Hubert's words kind of eased his mind and he hit that three and and they grew because they 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 see what, you know, lifting each other up during the course of a game. And they had to literally and figuratively lift each other up a lot tonight, how you can become a better club. And this is an iron five type unit. Mm. And a lot of people didn't think Brady Manick could give him 28 minutes a game or even 30 minutes a game. I think he was at 41 tonight. And there were some times he would get yeah, to, to the sideline during during a dead ball or timeout or whatever. And I look like he looked. I looked to a guy that was sitting next to him in the media. I was like, yeah, I don't think he's he's done. Yes. But he kept. He but he kept <laughs> digging in for that reserve and finding it. That's growth. Absolutely. People may not like that word, but growth. And you, you, they need to grow because they haven't really been. They're, they're te- when they've been tested this year, it was early. They get put out of their misery and they don't win. Or Notre Dame, they just never really had it. They couldn't overcome their own uh, poor mental approach to that game, and they and they lost. But tonight, they showed a lot of stuff, man. I think what mm-hmm. they showed was last Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, if you were to ball those three games up and just kind of splatter it on the floor, good stuff springs off that way, bad stuff springs off that way. And that's kind of what we saw tonight. And for them, they picked up a win. And they're 16 and six. They won four in a row. They're eight and three in the ACC. And what they've done is they've made the Duke game matter a great deal. It was going to matter a lot anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, but it wasn't just a pride thing. Carolina is now positioning itself to lock in a top four spot for the ACC tournament. And if they're able to pick up a win Saturday against Duke and get to 17 and six and nine and three in the ACC, well, then they're they're on a a straight course for the NCAA tournament because they lost tonight. No gimme because they would no. they would it would make Duke a must win game. I, I still think Duke is close to a must win game because they have mm-hmm. to get a Q one win at some point, mm-hmm. and their opportunities really aren't there other than the Duke game. So, uh, but winning the night and piling up wins that's good. That's good for this group. I think that they're a much more confident team now than they were four hours ago and certainly more than they were 10 days ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what the growth of the season is about. You got to get better and better. You need to grow faster than other teams are growing. And if mm-hmm. you have talent and you do that and the group is connected, then by the time you get to the end of February and into March, you're a pretty good team. Team that can mm-hmm. make a run. Those are the teams that make runs. Absolutely. So I'm not going to get ahead of, ahead of myself here. Not only anybody needs to worry about them making a run right now, they just need to worry about them navigating their way through the season. But they did a pretty good job of it tonight. A lot of warts, but so what? They got to win. And I think it's more impressive to have a lot of warts and still do good stuff and get a win. That's what Absolutely. good teams do. That's what a winning culture leads to. And that's how winning cultures are also born. And that's what they're trying to do in in year one of Hubert Davis. Absolutely. You'll take the win if you're, if you're Carolina all day long. And like I said, gritty performance from they found a way. And I think we, like you mentioned a lot, you saw some growth from this team over the last week in yep. particular. And I think this really kind of capped it off. We'll see how the Duke game goes down. Big time matchup in Chapel Hill coming up on Saturday between Carolina and Duke. But tonight, Carolina getting the 90-283 win over Louisville in Kentucky. 
I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Make sure you guys keep it locked to TarHillIllustrated.com. Head on over there after this video is done. Link in the description below for all your post-game coverage from tonight's game. And, of course, for all your coverage leading up to the Duke game on Saturday. And if you want to be a premium subscriber, get access to premium content, our premium message boards. You can sign up for just eight thirty three a month. And, man, it's a great time to do it. Our message boards are on fire and get, get access to our live game chats as well, which is always a, a fun little spot to be in. So head on over there, just eight thirty three a month to sign up. Like I said, link is in the description below. But you guys know the drill. Make sure you like, make sure you share. Make sure you subscribe at the notification bell as well. We're not too far away from 10,000 subscribers at all, trying to hit that before the season ends, and we are well on, on our way to doing that. So keep sharing, keep watching, and as always, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Thanks.